Well, if you're thinking of buying a home or want to put one on the market, the rules of the game changed today. New federal mortgage rules kicked in. The idea in this era of sinking mortgage rates and soaring home prices, keep people from getting in too deep. Here's a snapshot of the changes. You'll now have up to 25 years to repay your mortgage. That's down from 30. If you want to borrow against your home, the most you can get now is 80% of its value. That's down from 85%. And government insurance is limited to mortgages on homes purchased for less than a million dollars. Now, if all this seems familiar, there's a good reason for that. Those t first two rules were in place back in 2006. Well, the CBC's Ron Charles take a look at uh, who's affected today. Ron? Mark, today's changes mean some home buyers will have to rethink their plans. Others, though, managed to get into the market just under the wire. Amber Dykstra sped up her home buying plans by a year when she heard about the mortgage rule changes. She finalized her 30-year mortgage today just before they were eliminated. The difference between a 25-year and a 30-year amortization can be two to three hundred dollars a month. That can be the difference between eating soup and like actually eating real human, you know. Good, nice to see you. For Howard Yuhannon, the changes mean he may not be able to afford the million dollar condo he has his eye on. It's going to become more and more difficult, but the worst thing is, uh, later on for resale, it's going to be harder for other people to qualify as well. Mortgage broker Marcus Safari says the new rules will mean a lot of new buyers will have to settle for less yeah, house. So, I mean, let's say you've got a family that has a household income of $75,000. By switching their allowable maximum amortization from 30 years to 25 years, you're reducing the amount of mortgage that they can qualify for by about $50,000. Some mortgage specialists expect that to have a big effect on the housing market. So I believe that we could very much see a reduction in the home prices, at least in the short term, while things stabilize. The tightened mortgage rules were especially aimed at the overheated condo markets in Canada's biggest cities. Some economists suggest the changes might do some collateral damage to the rest of the economy. It is going to reduce the number of Canadians who qualify for a mortgage, which is going to reduce the sales of houses in Canada and thereby slow down somewhat the growth rate of the Canadian economy. Nonetheless, it is a necessary evil. Another concern, though, people who do manage to qualify but end up with much higher monthly payments and less money to spend on other things. Mark? Thanks, Ron. Well, as Ron said, uh, those changes are already making a difference for some people. For other Canadians, there's another home buying obstacle, these numbers. In 2002, the average family of two or more earned a little over $83,000. In 2010, it was $91,000. That's a bump of close to 11%. Now, compare that to housing prices. In 2002, the average Canadian home sold for about $190,000. By 2010, the price tag ballooned to $340,000. That's a leap of about 80%. Well, who better to go to for what all those numbers mean than our senior business correspondent, Amanda Lang. Amanda, clearly housing prices, uh, house prices rose sharply over the past 10 years. So if the government's intention is to help cool the market, any indication this is actually going to work? Well, changes like this in mortgage rules should cool activity over time. It'll shut people out who can't afford mortgages with more strict criteria. But when rules like this are announced, what you usually see is a rush to buy before they come into effect. And that just didn't happen here. In June, sales of homes in two of Canada's hottest markets, Toronto and Vancouver, went over a cliff, down 13 and 17 percent respectively. Prices didn't fall. Economists say they will within a few months. But it all suggests the markets might already have been cooling before this rule change was announced. And maybe it even should have come sooner. So, yeah, if the markets are cooling, why did the government do this now? They're worried about housing in general. It now encompasses a big share of our GDP. In fact, 19 percent. It's a record level. It that encompasses everything from construction to financing to related spending by home buyers. But the, the question about getting a soft landing is critical because it's such a big part of the economy. It's why the finance minister watches it. It's why the Bank of Canada governor watches it. Well, some people think that the housing market could be a barometer for the economy and may be worried about a softening market. And yet a new survey shows business might actually have some good news for us. What's that? Yeah, we have got this Bank of Canada quarterly survey. It shows business is feeling really confident about sales, investment plans, and most importantly, hiring. 59% of them say they will hire in the next year. Only caveat we got to mention, they are still a little worried about Europe. Okay, Amanda, thanks so much. Amanda Lang.